What's up guys, the April Patreon rewards are now available. Armageddon, Teferi Time Reveler, and Nekusar the Mind Razor are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash itresolves or clicking the link in the description below. What's going on guys? Welcome to another gameplay video. This time we're going tried and true with some mono red aggro. Uh, this list has not really changed. Uh, in fact, I don't think it's really changed at all. Um, w there are a few different versions of it, so I know some are running like the Calamity version, where uh, it's essentially just a bunch of 1-1s. Uh, you do get like Scorch Spitter in that one as well as Fervent Champion, but a lot of these other cards may not be a part of that list. But um, this is the list that we're going to go with. It's pretty much the tried and true, you know, red deck wins is what it does. So. Uh, the, the goal here, since we're not really looking at any new cards from Agoria, is just to see how Mono Red does in this standard environment. We've seen it do fairly well, kind of consistently well, uh, through the last few standard seasons, and so I kind of just want to see how it's reacting to some of the new decks that we're seeing, uh, New Ages of Jeskai Fires, uh, Garuda decks in particular, I think, are quite interesting. Some of these sacrifice decks, I think, are really, really interesting matchups. And so let's just see how it goes. I think that's going to be kind of fun. Um, I know we're not looking at any new Akoria cards, but let's just very quickly run through the list, just in case anybody has not quite seen this. Uh, it's very hard not to, but just in case. Um, in the one-drop slot here, uh, we have Fervent Champions. It's a 1-1 Haster with First Strike. This gets through a lot of damage. It also buffs other knights, which is great uh, if you've got multiple out on the field or if you've got like a Rimrock Knight. Uh, and so it does buff other things, and so you can really, really get some damage going quickly with this. Uh, Scorch Spitter, it's a 1-1 one, one for 1, but every time it attacks, it deals 1 damage to the defending player or a Planeswalker it's attacking. Uh, and so you can really, really threaten some Planeswalkers with this, but also you can deal a little bit of extra damage uh, with that one uh, stacking up. Uh, we also have Shock. This is just a way to clear the field as well as, you know, in a non-creature matchup, it's a way to just burn out the opponent, which is great. Uh, in the two drop slot, we have Rimrock Knight. Uh, it, it's a nice card in this list because for two mana, you're getting a 3-1 that can't block. It doesn't really matter that they can't block. You're only going to be attacking most likely. Uh, and then target creature gets plus two plus zero until the end of the turn on the other side. So if you've only got one mana left open, pump something up and then the next turn you get to throw this down. So very, very good. Uh, Robber of the Rich, one of the, I think, all stars of this deck. It's a two, two for two with haste and reach. Reach surprisingly can be very, very handy. Uh, but whenever it attacks, if the defending player has more cards in hand than you do, exile the top card of their library. If you do... Uh, during any turn that you attacked with a rogue, you can cast that card and you can spend mana as though it were any color to cast it. So essentially, no matter what it is, you have the ability to cast it. So uh, you do have to attack with a rogue, obviously, but very, very cool card for sure. And you get to steal stuff, which is fun. Uh, Runaway Steamkin not only can be a very, very strong, just powerhouse creature, uh, but it also keeps this deck going pretty well. Every time you play, you know, one of these one mana guys, you get a counter on this. Once you have three, you get to remove them and you get three mana. Uh, three mana in this deck can go a long, long way. So, uh, Runaway Steamkin, a bit of an all-star here. Uh, and speaking of all-stars, Anax. Hardened in the Forge. This card is stupid good. Uh, obviously from uh, Theros Beyond Death. Uh, so we've had this out for a little while, and it's been a big part of this deck since, you know, the very beginning when this set came out. But uh, this card just makes it very difficult for anybody to kill everything. Uh, you know, they sweep the board, you get a bunch of 1-1s. One uh, they remove, you know, a Robber of the Rich, you get a 1-1. One one. Uh, it's fine that they are just 1-1s one because it doesn't really need to be anything more than that. You're just dealing as much damage as possible, as quickly as possible, and this just helps you get there. Uh, Phoenix of Ash offers us a flyer and a little bit of a recursive threat, so... Uh, you know, it's very easy to burn out in a deck like this. We do have light up the stage to help us with that. But if you find yourself in a position where you don't have a whole lot going on uh, or you don't have a lot in your hand, if you've got a Phoenix of Ash in your graveyard, you're able to, to pull this out repeatedly, which is great. Uh, light up the stage here to help us draw cards and just keep us going, uh, fill up our hand a little bit. Uh, Torbran is amazing. We have it as a two of because it is a legendary creature, but uh, it's a two four and it does... Essentially, it means all of your red cards deal two more damage, no matter what it is. Uh, and so this is a very, very powerful card. And then, of course, we have Embercleave here to finish off the game as a three of. 
Uh, as far as our lands go, we're looking at 21. We don't have Fable Passage. We do not want tapped lands. 17 Mountains and 4 Castle Embreath. A uh, great way to just kind of pump up your entire board. So that's literally it. It's a very straightforward list. This is one that we've seen a lot, so uh, I don't feel the need to go over it too much more. But I do want to just mention, you know, this is a different standard environment. I think it's worth trying to see uh, how things react and how things work uh, in this certain, you know, certain environment. It's just a little bit different. Nice to try something different. All right. So... This is not an amazing hand, but I will keep it uh, solely because we can lean on this, you know, shock into Rimrock Knight if we need to. Drawing a Torbrand there is not great. Uh, this is a pretty slow hand for this deck. Not, not gonna lie. Uh, I'm gonna hold off on the shock. This is making me think they've got um, a uh, a mono blue or you know like a flash deck or something. Simic Flash, sure. Let's throw this out there. Let's attack. Go ahead and do this. And we'll pass turn. Don't have the double green, very notably for the Night Pack Ambusher. Gadwick. Yeah. It's good. Very good. Oh, we got a Torbrand, though. Uh, yeah, let's take the opportunity to play Torbrand out. We can Ember Cleave, but um, this is going to deal the damage either way, so I'm happy to do this. Yep. Gadwick, very, very cool card. Absolutely love it. Nissa. Okay. Sure. Behold, nature's true power. I don't know what well, I guess that makes sense. Um, okay. So how do we want to do this? I think we're just on the attack then plan. There we go. And that's exactly what Mono Red wants to do. Swing in, attack, and hopefully win very, very quickly, uh, as we did there. So let's go ahead and jump into game two. Um, that was a bit of a slow start from the Simic deck, uh, and a little bit strange. I don't normally see, if I'm not mistaken, I don't normally see Nissas in like a flash deck. And maybe that wasn't a dedicated flash deck, but they did have the Frilled Mystic that we stole off the top, um, and a Gadwick, which is kind of a telltale sign. I kind of think that that might not have been the best to uh, include, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, we'll keep this too. Great thing is, you know, we don't need many lands. Three, four. Four is really our optimal. Uh, and so if we have two or three in the starting hand, we can keep it. Uh, because, again, most of our deck is two mana or less. Uh, yep. Unfortunately, again, no one drop, but that's, you know, it's okay. We'll see what they do. I do love the simplicity of mono red. Now, this mono red list in particular has, you know, you got more decisions than you normally would um, with things like light up the stage and stuff like that. This is perfect. We get to shock that down. Definitely shouldn't have played it on their turn. That was, I think, a, a mistake on their side. Uh, let's get Robber the Rich down. And let's swing in. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, yes. Yes, please. Oh, my gosh. That's great. I, I'm in. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, let's see what they do. Okay, so it's a Winota deck. Um, that makes sense. Um, Let's just do this. I mean... Sure. Uh, are they not going to block? Oh, they, they still haven't made their blocks, I see. Uh, we're just going to Rimrock Knight here, I believe. Just get him down as far as we can. Um, next turn, we, we've we technically got this if we would like to steal it. Which, 
you know, I'm, I'm in for. <laughs> um, but they're halfway down and on turn three here, so... And they keep shocking themselves, which feels bad, I'm sure. I mean, that's fine. I don't particularly care about that. Hmm. Let's go ahead and attack here. Yep. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. I'm just gonna go critical mass uh, as much as possible here. Get as much down as we possibly can, and now we've got diversified threats. So, uh, if we draw like an Ember Cleave, for instance, we are well, well positioned. Uh, not only that, but we can just pump up the entire team with the Castle Embreath, all of which sound great. Um, and they're not Winodaing this turn, which is fantastic. Uh, here we get to kill this thanks to Fervent Champion. So, I mean, free block there. Okay, not amazing for us, but, uh, <laughs> sure. Uh, okay, let's see how they block. I mean, they, they kind of literally have to just block everything, I feel like. Um, maybe not literally, but they, uh, they're pretty close to just dying out right here. Mono Red, looking good, by the way. Love that we just get to steal their stuff, that's fun. I'm just gonna do this. Let's pump up the team. Down to one. Um, we're gonna do this, I think. Phoenix of Ash is great because it does mean we have a flying threat. Um, we were kind of hoping for like a shock there or something, but that's okay. Uh, here they're gonna get two triggers. So they could very easily get some really good stuff here, but again, we do have the Phoenix of Ash, so they have to get like a flyer, uh, otherwise they're in bad shape. Um, Agent, sure. Steel Robber? Makes sense. Uh, second Agent, I assume still Champion. All good, but... Not gonna be good enough. Play land. We'll go ahead and attack. And there we go. You see there the power of Phoenix of Ash. Uh, it's a really, really nice card to just be able to have access to um, because of those situations where, you know, they clog up the board with a bunch of stuff. We need to get by it. That's our way of getting by it. Um, excuse me one second, guys. I will be right back. All right, sorry about that, really, uh, guys. I had to jump away for just a quick second, but let's go ahead and jump into game three with Mono Red. Mono Red is doing some work, guys. I'm liking it. Um, you can really grind through some games with Mono Red, that's for sure. Uh, so let's see what we get. Uh, this is a great hand, actually. Uh, turn one, we've got Fervent Champion. Turn two, we can power it up with the Rimrock Knight if we'd like, or just play this out. Uh, but my assumption is we'll do this, pump it, and then spectacle out the uh, light up the stage. Um, we'll see what we're up against, though, obviously. If they've got, you know, if they're a mono red deck, too, then it's going to be a little interesting. Uh, let's say hello. Always nice to see people just saying, you know, hello, nice things. Sure. Good, good. Well, thankfully, we did draw the uh, Runaway Steamkin, so we've got a backup play here on two. <sighs> and then on three... Wow, okay. Are they stuck on land? No, okay. I was about to say, that's going to feel bad if they are. Guild Gates. I didn't actually realize they were playing Guild Gates, so that seems kind of funny. Hmm. Let's play Phoenix of Ash. They've played two Lava Coils. I'm really hoping they don't have a third. 
That would that would be a bad thing to have lava coils, uh, for the record. Uh, yep. Let's get that out there. Let's room rocket. And... Let's play Anax. Let's get some protection up. Ne next turn is the one where they may sweep. Uh, so I'd like to have this up now. Uh, if they do sweep, we also get to draw a card off of this. So, yep. Perfect, perfect. Uh, this deck, by the way, is very, very sweet. It gains just tons and tons of value. Um, which is awesome. But, ooh, Torbran is quite good. Let's go ahead and do this here. Just to give ourselves as much ammo as possible for next turn. If they've got a sweeper, they got to use it here. But uh, we do have the Phoenix. Not going to do it. Narset's good. Not good enough. They definitely needed a sweeper here. If they've got a way to remove Torbrand, that's fine. Yeah. But still not going to be enough. Especially with Castle, especially with, excuse me, Cash, Castle and Breath. Wow, I can't speak today. Uh, oh, well, and that's even easier. And there we go. That's what we're looking to do, guys. That is three straight wins for Mono Red. Uh, I think it's safe to say it's pretty well positioned in the meta, though we were only up against a few decks here. So we'll give this another video and see what we get. Um, I want to try this against a number of different decks because, you know, people are trying to grind the ladder and do that kind of stuff. This obviously has been the tried and true way to do that, but I want to see how it works in comparison to the Garuda decks, everything that's out there right now. Um, it's beating a lot of them quickly, which is great, but you never know. So let's try it out. We'll, we'll give it another video here, but hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Make sure you pick up our Patreon rewards. Those are cycling just down below here. This is, I don't believe, basically, uh, at the start of the new month, at the, on the 1st of May, uh, those will not long, no longer be available uh, altogether. You can, you can still get them, but they're through the $10 tier there, so that's the only way to do it. Um, but I do wish uh, all of you the very, very best, and thank you very much for watching. I certainly appreciate it. Uh, I will see you in the next gameplay video.